Hello everyone, this is Robert. In a previous video, I used my fiber laser to mark my angle gauge set, and I had a few comments asking what an angle gauge set is, what a radius gauge set is, and how do I use them, what do you use them for? So I thought this would be a good opportunity to kind of show a lot of the common tools that I use when I have an existing part that I need to interface with. So let's take a closer look at all of these. So as always, please feel free to use the chapters to skip around, and if you already know what all this stuff is, just go ahead and, you know, have the video playing in the background. It's not hurting anything. So let's say you have a project that, I don't know, let's say this motor, and you need to make a motor mount for it, or you need to somehow interface with it, you know, like this goes on there. You're going to need to measure some of these features. The first thing that I generally do is go online, I'll take the model number, and this is a prop drive 3548, I'll just go ahead and search for that and throw STL on the end of it, and usually I can find something. There are a couple go-to sites that I always use, GrabCAD is one, 3D Content Central is another. Generally, if a model exists, it's going to be on one of those two sites. If it's not on one of those, then I'll just say model number 3MF, model number STL, or model number, and sometimes step will work, or I just, things like that. If none of that works, you're probably going to have to model it. Now, you don't have to model the entirety of this part, obviously. You can just model the features. And I picked this because it's a good example that has some interesting geometry, and we can use these tools to figure out just what we need to know so that we can end up making a part that mates with it perfectly. So here's the stuff that I always grab when I need to model something. And I know some of this is going to be really obvious, like this is called a ruler. <laughs> but having a really nice, flexible metal ruler, this one's cork-backed, super, super thin and flexible. This one also has both standard and metric on it and a little hanger. You know, if you don't already have something like this, it is a really, really cheap thing to add into the shop. Obviously, I have links down below for all of this, but a really nice thin metal ruler is a great thing to have. A machinist square. Um, for any of you non-machinist out there, if you're just kind of doing the 3D printing thing, you might have already heard that one, two, three blocks are really cool. But a cheap machinist square is a great thing to have. It is a great thing for, you know, checking the 90 degree of something and all sorts of other tasks. Then we have, let's go to the calipers. The good old classic digital calipers. Um, this is the Mitu Toyo, but I also have a pair of um, Nikos inside that I actually kind of like better than these sometimes. Um, link down below on those. And a digital protractor. This is kind of one of those cheap tools that ends up being really handy. Just has a digital display on it, and when you move it, well, I gotta loosen it, it will show the degrees on it. So these come in really, really handy. And then of course we have the angle gauge and then the radius gauge sets. I have two different sets. You can get these in tons of different sizes. These are kind of the most common ones I use, but I have them both in metric and standard. Now, the cool thing about all three of these is I am um, linking to exactly these, but you can 3D print these as well. I mean, they're just two dimensional pieces, right? So you can do a really simple 3D print of all of these and additional sizes. I just end up getting the metal ones, and I do like the metal ones, but you don't have to pay any money. If you have a 3D printer, you can 3D print all of these. So now let's go into a couple examples. These are all things I'm actually working on right now. So let's um, kind of see how we use all these tools in different applications. Okay, so example number one, this brushless motor. There's a few different things that we can do with this. Um, I'm using this on a project. It's kind of like this um, desktop mini metal chop saw. It looks something like this. I think it's pretty cool. Be on the lookout for that project. It has been extremely useful so far. So to model this thing up, I needed to model a motor mount that fit onto the face of this. So here is what the face looks like. I wanted to take advantage of these little cutouts so that it could key into the motor mount like that. So we're gonna grab the angle gauge set, not the angle gauge, the radius gauge set. So this is the metric because this motor's metric. Um, most things are gonna be metric. And we're just gonna kinda go through and select the wrong one for demonstration purposes. This is a, what is that, an eight millimeter radius. And you can see, not 
quite right. So let's get the correct one. So you can just kind of go through, guess and check. And if we grab the 12, look at that. Perfect, perfect fit. So we know that these are 12 millimeter radius or 24 millimeter diameter circles, and that makes modeling this up really easy. The other thing is if you can just simply measure the shaft, we can find out that that's five millimeters. But what if this is somewhere difficult where you can't get the calipers down in there? You can also use these little gauges to measure that as well. So like if we grab this, um, what's that, three? That is a nine. You can see, oh, that's not quite right. So here is a three, and you can see there's still a little bit of play on there. But then if we grab the 2.5, boom. So 2.5 radius equals five millimeter diameter. So that is actually pretty handy. So you can use them for measuring shafts as well, because it's a lot easier to just kind of get this down in there than it might be to have the room for calipers. So if we look closer at this motor, you can also see that there's a chamfer on this face as well as a chamfer on the back side. So what we can do is we can actually use the angle gauge set to measure those. So I, of course, happen to grab the perfect ones, but on this face, um, let's try the 75. And we can see that 75 lines up, so we know that we have a 75 degree chamfer there. And then on the back side, I just randomly grabbed this one, and let's see, the 55, 55 degree chamfer on the back side. So these are really handy, and as you can see, they have a lot of different cuts on them, so each one of these is going to be 55, so we can use these in a lot of different applications, but for something like that, nice and simple, that is 55 right there. So here's something else I'm working on. This is a subwoofer plate amplifier. I'm making this kind of bookshelf subwoofer using IKEA boxes for the actual enclosure. More on that later. Looks something like this. And this amplifier kind of fits into one of the baffles and I want it to actually be flush. Now, when you get stuff, usually it comes with some kind of dimensional diagram and it's a 25 by 27 centimeter. And we can verify that with our trusty ruler. Yeah, right at 27 and right at 25, no problem. But what manufacturers don't always do is they don't give you these corner radiuses. So if I want this to set in nice and flush, I need to know what these radiuses are. So once again, we can grab our radius gauges and that is a 1.5 and let me zoom in a little bit. This is a 1.5 and you can see that just doesn't quite work. So let's try a six. And look at that, it is perfect. It shouldn't have any rock to it, no motion whatsoever. So we have a six millimeter radius. And you know, when you're using these, you'll know. You'll know when it's the right fit. And if it doesn't quite feel right, then go to the standard. Maybe this is a standard. Maybe this is actually um, a quarter inch instead of the six millimeter. So yeah, you can always try it. And the other nice thing that you can do is since we have all of these different profiles, we can test it like that. Or when we're actually doing the cutout on the part, we can use this piece to stick inside to make sure that it is matching the radius. So yeah, they have a lot of little different features to them that you can use. So here is yet another project that I'm currently working on. This is like this little paint shaker thing. So you get a paint can that sits right there. This moves around. Now, normally this was just meant to go into the back of a drill. So you just put your drill in there and spin it around. But of course I'm adding a motor and kind of automating this. So I want to model up a lot of different things on this. As you can see from the front, it has this draft angle. It's, you know, narrow and goes down. You could theoretically measure it up here, measure it down there, and then just model that. But let's say we actually want to find the angle. We can use this guy. Also, we can verify if this is actually square with our machinist square because I'm not sure if this is kind of flaring out like that, flaring in. So we can just quickly use the square to verify that that's square. And then obviously we can use the square to figure out that 
that is very much not a 90 degree. So we need to kind of figure out what this angle is. So the easiest way to do this, let's just kind of move this over here so you can see. We can't really measure directly on that flange because it's gonna raise us up. So I can just actually use the square like that, rest it down like that, measure it up, and then we can just lock this in place. And that is 95.2. So most likely this is a five degree draft angle. You know, it's obviously 5.2, but it's sheet metal, so there's a little variability. So if we're modeling something like, I don't know, an enclosure or something like that off the back, we know that this has a five degree angle to it. And lastly, I've got this piece. Um, this seems really simple, but it's not. This is the exhaust port on my X-Tool CO2 laser. And what I wanna do is kinda of have like a duct that plugs into this and allows me to switch between my fiber laser and this for my HEPA filter. So what we need to do is kind of model this up a little bit. It's relatively short. You can see that there is a radius right here and it might be difficult to see on camera, but this is not actually square. As with all injection molded parts, there is gonna be some sort of a draft angle. That is so that it can actually come out of the mold. So we're gonna go ahead and grab some radius gauges, and this is a six or six and a half. This is a six, and that looks pretty good. Let me see if I can kind of show you. That looks nice. It's always difficult with the draft, but that's why we can kind of use this. So yeah, I think I feel pretty comfortable saying that that is a six. Let's try the six and a half. Yeah, this one just kind of hits right on the point. So let's go with a six. We had a six millimeter radius on there. Now to measure the draft angle, this gets a little bit tricky. So hold on, let me, let me set this all up. So we need to measure this angle, but there's really not enough meat here. So there's a million different ways to do this. So I'm just gonna show you one kind of terrible example. So I'm using a parallel just to kind of lift things off of the workbench a little bit. Normally you'd do this on like a granite surface plate, but this is not that precise. I'm gonna use the square kind of pressed up against the side and you can see there's a little bit of an angle there. Then I'm gonna put this down there and then we're just gonna make those two parallel like that. Lock that in place. And we've got about a three and a half um, degree draft, which uh, seems about right. I mean, obviously I'm kind of doing this at a weird angle off camera, but that is kind of an example of what you could do to figure out the draft on that. So now I can model a part that has a three and a half degree draft with a six millimeter radius, and that will fit nice and snug on there. So there you go. For the few people that ask, that is what a radius gauge set and an angle gauge set are used for. I find them very, very useful. And like I said, I have links down below for 3D printable copies, and I have actually 3D printed a lot of kind of odd sizes just to kind of verify. But the metal ones are nice to have. They make a great stocking stuffer. I know it is that time of year, so something to think about. Um, all of this stuff is linked down below. The Machina Square is kind of one of those things. If you have one, two, three blocks and you don't have one of these, get one of these, they're really cheap. All of this stuff is relatively inexpensive. And this cheap little like digital protractor has come in very handy for me. If you do any home improvement projects, that thing is fantastic. We used a lot of this in our kitchen remodel to kind of measure the angle of things because walls are never straight, walls are never at a 90 degree, and it has this nice big radius so you can kind of get into a corner and measure the exact angle, lock it, bring it out to the shop, make your cut, things like that. So. As always, thanks for watching. Hopefully um, a few people learned something from this and we'll see you in the next video.